yeah shall we start so i mean i want to start with the basic um, kind of just get to know a uh, you know, uh, segment and to begin with i wanted to understand a little about you your company your professional career so far um i have several businesses <coughs> The first one is Fire Art Studio, which is a software development company and design studio. Uh, the second one is a sister company of the Fire Art. It's uh, Explain Ninja. It's a video production services. So historically, it turned up that we we've been asked uh, by our clients about the video marketing and uh, some materials and some supporting materials for their campaigns, their products. So we decided that we uh, need a production uh, services in our pool of services in order to deliver everything to our client that they need. And we created the company Explain Ninja and right now it's uh, more than 20 employees over there. And we are creating like five to six uh, videos per month for worldwide clients. Uh, it is the second company and this ch- the third one was the game uh, development company. Um, so it's not the service, service company that we are creating games for clients, but we are creating games uh, for ourselves and selling them. Uh, and the last one is the complex analytics platform. So basically it's a uh, software as a service. Uh, could you tell me a little about your professional journey, basically, you know, from where you've come to where you are at the moment? Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the roots are um, probably based on my education because I'm a developer uh, by education with the, the AI uh, focus. And um, and then I started to be a freelancer designer. Uh, when I changed the country from Ukraine to Poland, I removed. Uh, I moved to Poland like ten years ago or something like that. And I was I was a freelancer designer, and then I had more and more projects every day, and I couldn't handle it by myself. So I hired some guys to help me. And then. Um, I hired more guys and, you know, this uh, yeah. organic, organic story of every business. So what draw you towards uh, web design then? Because like you started out as a developer, but I think right now, do you primarily work in uh, web design or, or like designing a design for products? And uh, Me personally, I'm working in operations. I'm not okay. a designer or developer or, or I'm a, a, a C-level manager. Uh, but uh, the transition between developer and designer was um, quite interested, interesting because I had an education as a developer, but it turned out that I'm not a good developer and I don't like it, the most importantly. Uh, so I started to experiment with different specialities. I was a photographer, like CEO specialist and stressed. And then I stopped on design because I really liked it. I liked that uh, it solves the problems uh, of clients in a quite fast way. So what are some of the red and the green flags in the industry right now for an emerging entrepreneur um, who's looking to enter it? Okay, um, so most importantly in entrepreneurship is that you shouldn't give up. Um, I mean, in some cases, uh, it would be a a bad suggestion because in some cases it should be give up, but you know it only in future. Uh, So you should be stubborn even if something doesn't work. Uh, and you really believe that it should work, should be stubborn and shouldn't give up. We have a <clears throat> quite dramatic story in Fire Art Studio that we almost closed the studio uh, because uh, from the very beginning, we were focused on uh, Eastern European market. Uh, it's Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and 
Um, it was okay. It wasn't very successful, but it was okay. Worked somehow. And then uh, there were a crisis uh, and the USD slash uh, ruble um, changed... Uh, the, the, the transition, the transaction rate changed significantly. So we, our, our price for for these clients, like, uh, got very high, and we lost all our, all our clients. Uh, I had like money for five months of existing the studio to pay uh, taxes, to pay uh, salaries, etc., and and we started to to change the market to the US and Europe, to the English speaking clients. Uh, at this moment, my English was on the minus zero level. Uh, and it was uh, challenging because of that. <clears throat> and um, it wasn't successful from the beginning. And from and at the end, it wasn't successful as well. And in the middle, of course, yes. But then, when I already said to my employees at the very last months that I have lost money and I'll, sell, I, I'll, I'll send you your salaries at the end of the month and then we are closed. Uh, we've got our first client from France uh, like seven days before the end of the month. We got our first client from France and... Uh, this client helped us to not to close the business. It's, it wasn't success, like, but, but we haven't closed. And then <clears throat> in several weeks after, we got the second client from the Canada and then third one, et cetera, et cetera. So we started to get some traction on US and Europe market. And this taught me not to give up. Because we, we, we were on the edge of closing the company and closing the studio. I already uh, updated my resume. I started to look for some work. Um, and then the, the second, yeah? I'm sorry, when was this? It was uh, on the edge of 2014 and 15. Um, and yeah, <laughs> the second no, it, uh, yeah. suggestion for new entrepreneurs would be uh, not to focus on formal stuff. I know that when you start your company, it's very um, cool to create the company, I mean, entity. Uh, to order the stamp, to order the branding and to update your status on uh, Facebook that you're entrepreneur and, you know, so on, so on, so on. But this is very formal. It doesn't help to your business. Um, and even though some of this stuff is necessary according to law, I mean, to, to pay taxes, etc., it's better to cheat a little bit, not to like avoid taxes, but cheat a little bit just to get proof of concept that your business is working. And then when you will, when and if you will start to grow, uh, you can create the company and pay these taxes, but not like from the very beginning. I know that a lot of entrepreneurs are starting from um, buying the office, like uh, ordering the branding for their business, but there is no business actually so far. So I think this is a wrong path. If you were basically, you know, as a head of operations or as a CEO, what do you think in terms of people management or what would be your uh, or in office superpower, for instance, what is the core strength of your company or core strength in every operation that you follow with uh, different organizations, if that makes it clear? I mean, the main thing is to hire uh, the management um, 
that you would be able to trust and then you can delegate your some of your stuff to them but not uh, micromanage them mm. uh, if you're not if you do not trust to your management or to your managers then you wouldn't be able to give them the work and forget about that of course it should be a, a, a hand-on approach at the very beginning because you should uh, onboard these people and uh, give them the tasks and to control that everything is okay they have every every tool that they need and they they understand everything help them if something is wrong but then you should like take your hands off and and uh, observe the results because if you won't do that you won't be able to work on your stuff the more management managers you will have the more headache you will have you will control everything but you can't really control everything okay well because the thing is at first i from your profile and everything the way i missed the question i was all kind of directed towards design and uh, the design aspects of product but i think that because you say that you know you mainly manage operations i'll put it more of an open question then what exactly which sector or you know in the industry what technology stack or what is it that you're really uh, passionate about then what is it that you like to be involved in hands on rather than just in operations i'm not hands on on like particular stuff but uh, I know about everything and, and I, I can tell you about the design actually more than about the development but uh, in terms of development uh, we are focused on JavaScript languages like React, Vue, React Native and uh, uh, Node.js in terms of backend and we truly believe that this is the languages and the stack that you can rely on because it's not very innovative on the one hand and to be too it's not too innovative to be uh, a rare case of uh, clients needs and it's not too old like php for example so it's the in the middle in the happy middle of technology i would say and it has a big infrastructure a lot of like services for example uh, aws supports this this stack as well uh, so i think this is the the most reliable technology stack in terms of web design what which um design trends or you know which um in terms of basically product design what do you think i just wanted to get a view of also your 2020 and because you know okay let's jumping on to the pandemic aspect of it because that was kind of my third segment of the whole conversation and i wanted to understand that um in 2020 with the pandemic, there's been like a pre-COVID and a post-COVID era in terms of company processes, uh, you know, new adaptations that you've had to make. So as a product design company, as in someone that's involved in web design and, you know, uh, design aspect of it, have there been any particular shifts in uh, design? I wouldn't say so because product design mainly focused on solving the problems of clients and their clients, uh, first of all. So the, the problems and UX rules hasn't been changed at all. Uh, the way of how, how the company works internally changed significantly because everybody the, uh, at home we have more stand-ups, we have more Scrum approach or Agile, and every company that survives basically changed in the same way. Um, but this is an internal kitchen. Um, big picture is that it 
doesn't it have hasn't been changed because the clients still working with us remotely as it was always <clears throat> and uh, like we are delivering cool stuff so internally what all changes have you uh, are there any noticeable changes that you, you know that really struck out to you or was it just simply digitalization of the workplace um it was digital digitalization we also understood that uh, we had to understand that some of our employees are not really productive so unfortunately we had to say goodbye to them but it made our company more strong because we are delivering uh, better stuff to our clients and in a uh, more disciplinary way because those employees were were like less disciplinary and this covid situation helped us to understand the the gaps in our uh, processes so it helped us helped us to create the processes of delivering the design of creating the design we also uh, gather it our designers into the teams and they are working on the products now not alone but in teams and consulting with each other more than it was when they are they were sitting in our uh, in in the office space uh surprisingly <laughs> so it really helped us to optimize the business uh what does 2021 look like for you for instance mm i would say it's hope <laughs> because uh, everybody i feel that everybody are tired of this situation and they are dreaming about cafes opened and uh, the meetings with guys with friends etc and we are dreaming about the events that we can participate and show our cool stuff to speak with clients personally to drink a coffee with them um to be honest i don't believe that in 2021 it will change maybe at the very end but i really hope that it will change because this situation um we are living in, in this new world too long now um in terms of processes and our company <clears throat> uh i think we will uh strong up the development field uh because we are kind of divided on design and development uh the the, the departments are working uh, closely but still it's design and development so we're going in, going to hire a lot of people a lot of developers because we have uh, a lot of product uh, projects right now in our pipeline and um, yeah so for you personally as an industry leader what exactly like, i want to i want to know what you're excited about what what industry trend or you know what technology are you really looking forward to that you're you know looking to jump on uh the minute it's more mature i mean big data and ai right now is uh, on uphill uh, they are going to go higher and higher every day but i'm not going to jump on this because it's too complicated it's like more than for, more more for product teams than from uh service companies because when you're building some company some startup based on ai or big data uh you would rather hire internal developers than hire the company that does this stuff for you uh what i think would grow this year is a flutter it is uh, quite innovative and it's 20 like 20% development on flutter is 20% uh, faster than uh, on js uh, on react native for example um so it's better it's 20% less costs right 
uh, we're not on this technology, we're not setting this right now, but probably we're going to try it because uh, it, it turns out that it's going to be good. If there was this one thing, like a flower or a you know an object, because I wanted to understand what your spirit animal is like what what would kind of just be you know would what would cat oh <laughs> okay. this is my spirit animal a duck what is that one industry trend or one industry jargon that you think is overhyped and is talked about more than it should have should be overhyped like it's changing from week to week, but today it's Clubhouse and Crypto Art. I, I picked two illustrations and, and I wanted to uh, just give it a try and to, to try to sell it on Crypto Art platform. But it turned out that it's really complicated to buy crypto, to pay for this. Uh, Applying because you when you are uploading the art you you have to pay something in crypto. In order to pay in crypto, you have to have crypto. In order to have crypto, you have to buy it. And buying crypto is not really simple. And uh, registering the packets is not really simple as well. So I decided that I don't have time and energy for that experimenting okay thank you so much have a nice day thank you